Fuck. Okay. I haven't been on my computer in a good long while. What's up, everybody? Um, oh, shit. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do today. <laughs> I'm so unbelievably torn. Mm. All right. Uh. Uh. Um, I know the new amnesia's out. Yes, I'm aware. You are not the first to tell me. All right. Drag that out. Drag that out. My hair is terrible. I need a haircut. I don't know what game to play. I've started World of Warcraft hardcore. I'm like level 49. I'm almost there, but holy fuck, do I not want to play WoW. Um, but I know once I stop playing WoW, I'm going to want to play WoW again. And also, I kind of wanted my first variety stream to be like a 24-hour stream, but now I'm busy this Saturday night, so I can still stream Saturday, but I can't do a 24-hour like I wanted. So everything's all fucking jingle-jangled, and I don't know... What the right play here is, and how to do things. Fuck you, metric. Um, so, good morning. What's up? Summit died. I don't see, I just don't care. You um, got that dog in you. Uh, well, I don't know what that means. Thanks. Um,. The expo went great. Um, that's done. I know a lot of other expos are going on. Holy fuck, that light is just shining in. It's like heaven. Uh, am I happy? I feel like you're trying to give me therapy. Um, yeah, there was a lot of very good constructive, <clears throat> constructive criticism uh, on the expo. All of it's right. 100% right. Um, but it, it went well at the end of the day, we hit all of our fucking CTAs, uh, view count was good. A lot of very good constructive feedback. Um, and they're all correct. I think it was something I got, <laughs> I was actually getting so fucking mad because during rehearsal, so we did rehearsal, right? And a lot of people were like, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't have anything to add here. And so for next year, what we should... I'm like, guys, shut the fuck up. We literally have the expo tomorrow. Why are we talking about next year now? So... <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but yeah, no, I saw... I was actually watching Co Carnage live. After the expo, the first stream I opened, because I know he's going to have, like, really good input, and I listened to everything he was saying. Um, during the dev interviews, absolutely should have B-roll. I do not know why we didn't. Um, there's a lot of people that they didn't have anything to add. Because they don't play games, or they don't know how to put what they're thinking into words in a way that actually adds anything. Either way, unnecessary. Um... I think Co mentioned that we didn't explain why wishlisting was so important, and I think that's why people are like, yeah, I would, like, we're not just saying words when it comes to that. That's, like, important. It's very important to mention why it's important to wishlist these games, because it, it's an algorithm thing. It gets these games in the Steam algorithm, and it helps them a fuck ton. And when it helps them, it helps us, because then a lot more games want to be in the expo, and it's like this churning circle that's very important. Um, so mentioning why wishlisting these games was important should have happened. S fan was very new to that. Uh, the first, the first thirty minutes of that expo, after we started, I, I don't think Tips will care if I say it. Tips was so fucking frustrated he had to walk out of the building. He's like, "Oh my god, fuck, everything's terrible." Because one, our Starforge PC didn't show up on time, so. Um, if you saw at the beginning, we had to show a picture, and then halfway through, we got to show it in person. 
The PC just didn't show. UPS fucked us. Um, so he was freaking out there. S fan was stuttering and struggling. Uh, I think we stacked like four ads at the beginning. I, the run of show, it was just an oversight. And it was too much at the beginning. We weren't even showing the games. And he was like, it's, it's all over. It's over. Burn it to the ground. <laughs> so, but then S fan started to pick it up. He's very new to it and experienced, but he started to get more in the swing of things. The Starforge PC did show up halfway through, and we did get to at least show it the, uh, the one of the 20 that you could buy. Um, and of course, we, we started showing the games, and people were like, holy fuck, these games are a lot better this year. And we're like, yes, everything started doing really well. So, why did everyone sound fake saying the same adjectives? Because they don't know what the fuck else to say. And, and keep in mind, when it came to Mizkif, the whole joke, I literally wrote his notes for him. He doesn't have anything to say, and it's like, we're walking this line of, we are OTK, and we have a bunch of our own viewers there. A lot of them are fucking stupid kids um, that just want to see their streamer on the screen. And that's important to kind of maintain that. But I think we mismeasured and didn't realize how big of an actual industry type, you know, expo this really was. Um, so we could do less of that. Um, some people could just not be there or give them different roles. Um I know a lot of people are like, why don't you just show the trailers and only show the trailers and do nothing else? Well, number one, we have to do ads because it pays for that. And number two, we have to, the, the wish listing, you have to have breathing time in between. If you just show the ads, everyone sees the ads and then moves on. And it doesn't help the devs as much. So you got to give breathing room in between ads. That's why we have those panels, not just because we think it adds a fuck ton, but because it's important. Um... Panels could be better. Dev roll or B roll during the dev interviews. Not dev roll. Um, and just smoother. There's a lot of things that could have been improved, but I'm the negative Nancy. I mean, we had like dinner after it, and all I did was point out everything that went wrong. But, and I, I think it was Nick who had to correct me, like, Chance, you're saying all these things, but all in all, Despite changes we, that need to be made, it went fucking great. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a negative Nancy, and I'm just like, it was change this, that, blah, blah. A year from now, I'm just hoping I don't forget those changes, and we'll see. Definitely having the name of the games of the developer interview would be cool. Well, that and B-roll, man. Yeah, that's like, that was a production oversight, and it's just... Add it, you know? That's such an easy add. Just rewatch the VOD in the year? Oh, yeah. Uh, last year, our one thing was we wanted more and better games, but that's something that just comes with time as people take the expo more serious and recognize that it really can help a lot uh, for a lot of these indie devs, so they'll want to apply, they'll take it more seriously, they'll get us better trailers, because it matters and it helps a lot. Um... But the other thing was it was too long. That was our, those were our two takeaways from last year. And this year was longer, I think, but we had a lot less downtime. Last year, I think we had like a fucking one hour break of like playing a mobile game. Um, there was just a lot of, just so much downtime. It was so bad. This year, there was a lot of talking, a lot of pointless talking, not as much downtime. It was, I think we showed like 60 games, something fucking insane. Uh, noting it down in the dock with a title might help. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why I wanted to fucking get everything. That's why when we had dinner afterwards, I was just like, okay, all of this is fresh in my mind. Hey, guys, here's what we fucked up and what we should do different. And I was like, <sighs> almost ruined dinner. But Tectone and his tank top actually infuriated me. I already fucking grilled the fuck out of him at the airport. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? That infuriated me. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Motherfucker. Like. Uh, oh God. He shaved his. I don't, 
I don't care. There's just, there's, why, man? God, why? It was hot, dude. I don't care then. Wear a t-shirt. Like, it's one of those things. It's hard to be grossed out by your own body because you are you, right? But like, example, I pick my nose and I look at my booger. I'm not grossed out. Make it anyone else's booger and it's, I'm going to throw up, right? Just as an example. And it's like Tectone, your hairy body is disgusting. Put it away. And, and during the, our only live dev interview, these guys flew across the seam. I, I talked with the dev and I apologize profusely. They're extremely good sports. They were very like, ah, I mean, it's fine. It was great. Everything was awesome. It was, you know, so I talked with them, but still, bro. <sighs> Isn't it good to not look mainstream? Every single thing, we cannot look mainstream so easily, so easily with and take out all of those stupid things I was mentioning so easily like that, whatever. Like, I haven't seen I haven't seen any of these expos. I don't know how they are. Um, I think the Ubisoft one just happened. I was browsing it while I was taking a shower this morning. I saw the Summer Games Expo because uh, I got to watch that before my flight uh, to LA. Um, and I was watching, I was like, man, there's like no new games. Like, because they, they all, everyone else is specializing in like AAA stuff. And it seemed like there was fucking nothing. There was nothing. It just seemed like a bunch of like collabs of like, hey, DLC added to this already popular game besides Mortal Kombat 1. Maybe a couple of others, but. Really not a lot. There is a lot. Okay, I haven't seen the X see, I haven't seen the Xbox showcase. I'm talking about the Summer Games Fest and also apparently uh Star something Star Wars Outlaws, Xbox and Starfield. Okay. Summer Games Fest was fine. It was fine, but I mean, again, after looking at all, I, I guess maybe I like indie games too much. Um, I'm a little different. After looking at other things, I just appreciate the fact that we're showcasing 60 games plus. That is insane. And I look at others and it's like 10. Granted, their games are like fucking insane. And they're AAA as fuck. Some of them are good. A lot of them, it's like, you don't know if it's going to be good or not um, with AAA games nowadays. But still, so fucking many. And I love that. Plus, I, those are the games I actually play, so. All right. Where do GDP I watch? GDP is done. Working on my proof of concept. When would be the right time to submit a pitch? What the fuck is GDD? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Two good games is greater than 50 shit ones. Yeah, um, but I just don't think those indie games are shit. A lot of them look really good. Um, I helped put together the list. There's some good ones in there. Some that I'm really fucking uh, excited for. Granted, it's like they're indie, and a lot of the times you play them for a bit. You looked like you were frustrated every time Seer would start memeing. Was that acting? No. No, Seer's pissing me off. Because all he did was read his fucking Steam cue cards. Serious hilarious though, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Uh, I mean, I remember we were trying to decide everyone's role. I was like, okay, give me Seer and give me Nick. Nick is great, and the thing is, people shit on Nick. Nick did his job. Nick was receive the call out from S Fan or Asmin, whoever's bringing up the variety gaming panel. Do his call to action, and then let me and Seer talk. That's what his job was. And he did it perfectly. <laughs> That's what his job was. 
Co Carnage had some really good thoughts and improve. No, I agree. I, I, I heard all of those live. And then I was like, I saw it made an LSF post. I was like, I didn't even want to watch the clip because I listened to Co Carnage's like criticism and it truly taught me being on this side of the table where it's like people are criticizing you. His way of criticizing is the best way to do it. He was, he criticized, he was correct. It came out positive. It wasn't toxic, and it didn't make me feel like shit. What an absolute gem. So that is what I listened to the most, was everything he had to say. And he's right with pretty much, I, I say pretty much, I think he's right with literally everything that he said. All right. So what's the next expo going on? Capcom in two hours? Oh. Lyric's wish list was full after that. I watched Lyric. Motherfucker was playing Diablo the whole time. <laughs> and a fucking his box was smaller than my camera right now. <laughs> he was just playing Diablo, man. Uh, the Xbox one is worth a watch. Okay, I haven't, I don't, I'm not going to watch any of this shit live, but I'll watch it. The 3%. Oh my God. Uh. He encountered the butcher while watching. Oh. How likely is it to incorporate Lyric or Co? I mean, if they want to. Absolutely. Uh, we were talking there's a lot of OTK members where it's like, where do, where is their place at this expo? And it's really hard to pinpoint them. It may just come down to, we might not have every OTK member there next time. Um, and that's fine. We're, I don't think we'll have them talk about games again. Uh, a lot of people. Because it's just, even if they do, there's only so much that needs to be said that can be said. And you don't want to overcrowd a panel, right? But it would be cool to have guests. Um, there's tons of ideas being thrown around. Like, what if, what if we had the panel where, like, God, I love doing the banter with Seer, but what if we did a panel where, like, Lakari gets to go up there for, you know, one set of games, and then this person goes up there for a set of games, and this and that, and there's that being thrown around. There's... I do predict next year as well we'll have even more games. Right? Um, which would be cool, which means less talking, but we still have to do our call to actions. We still have to be lucrative, right? Of course, we can't do this expo for free. Um, so those have to be there. We also need to give breathing time between games because we need to get these games wish listed. It helps these devs a ton. I don't think people understand how important it is. Um, and Ko is right. We should have mentioned that. I don't know. All of it's still fresh in my mind. I don't want to go in too deep with it, but tons of different ways to do it is being considered, I I'd imagine. Ugh. Research what a writer's room is about. It's what made Breaking Bad and Simpsons great. Set up that shit. Hire competent writers for the game. Okay, for the game. We're not writing a fucking narrative story. <laughs> it's a games expo. <laughs> what the? <laughs> it's a. What? Call Shakespeare. <laughs> Okay. Can you make a way to wishlist directly from Twitch Overlay? Dude, that'd be huge. That's, I think, yeah, having like a Twitch Overlay where it's like wishlist now and Steam, you click the button, it brings up your Steam, and it's just click, e -a done. Cap website, You're best right. place to just watch trailers. That's a really good idea. Scroll down to Xbox Showcase. E3 recap website. Uh, this doesn't seem right. It 
Is it it? Okay. Oh. Damn. Am I cringe? I kind of want to see the actual expo, though, because I just want to see, like, different things, like how do they introduce the games? What do they do in between? All these different expo shit. Because I'm in an expo mood. I don't want to just, like, hey, trailer, next. Hey, trailer, next. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll probably skim through a lot of cringe shit, but... So which one should I watch first? If I'm going to watch all of them, because I've got a lot of making up to do. Okay, Xbox Showcase 2023. 22 hours ago? That can't be it. Oh, this one. An hour and 40 minutes? This has to be it. Damn, they, they got their shit short and sweet.